Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Cape Town Basketball Association's third webinar. Um, I'd like to apologize for our cancellation last week, but this is a, it's a new territory for us, and um, we had some technical challenges, um, but we are back, and, and thank you for joining us. Tonight is going to be a very exciting um, engagement. Um, one of the first things that the CTPA's leadership did after our election in October was to establish or re-establish the commissions, which is basically working groups made up of our members to ensure that everything that happens within the structure is influenced by our, our members and that they are allowed the opportunity to contribute to that. Um, tonight, um, we are going to engage with the technical commission and also with the competitions commission. So these are the guys that organizes our officials and also arranges all our leagues, competitions, etc. Apart from them, we have a coaching and development commission which has been established, a women's commission which we've already heard uh, from uh, two weeks ago, a finance audit and risk commission, a marketing commission and a safety and compliance commission. Obviously, due to time constraints, we can't have everyone at once. So these are the guys that we're going to talk to tonight. So tonight I'm joined by Masi. And clearly, he's our uh, convener for our technical commission. And Kurt Daniels, who serves on the competitions commission, which is convened by Denvin Jones. He's unable to join us, but Kurt is a uh, able and, and competent uh, stand-in uh, for Denvin. So, guys, welcome. Thank you for your time. Um, we really appreciate in advance the work that, that you guys will do and have done already in the past. So, um, Masi, I'm going to start with you. Um, your appointment as the convener of the Technical Commission was a slightly different environment to what we are used to. We used to see you shouting at the guys from the sideline as a coach um, and, and doing those types of, of work. How have you, how have you um, observed the status of the Technical Commission um, in the CTBA? What's your view of, of the current status and, and, and everyone involved in it? Uh, thank you, Jason, and uh, evening to everyone out there. Yes, it's been a while since I've been part of the technical as it mentioned. But last time I was actively officiating was early or mid 2000. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very exciting one to be the technical coordinator. The status of our technical officials with the city, we have a group, a handful group senior officials uh, that are enthusiastic and uh, energetic about the task that a, a couple of juniors. The, the, the real challenge that we're facing is always around trying to obtain the officials while we are recruiting the new group. So the recruitment and retention is always a challenge. We don't have a specific that is purely officials. So people are double -dipping. We're sitting in a situation where a person will be a player, will be a coach and officiate at the same time. So so that is the, the, the major, major crisis that we're facing. Uh, whereby if we're looking for purely officials, you can count. It's it's less than it's less than 10. So everyone else has other commitment. I think that is the big challenge. In terms of the, the maturity, in terms of the competence, and the expectations we have within our members. Uh, okay. Thanks for that. Um, it, it sounds like the, the, there's um, a, a challenge in terms of capacity, in terms of, of resources available out there. So as, as the convener of this commission, um, what are your plans, um, particularly leading up to 2021, to, to build capacity, to, to, to train new officials? How are you going to approach this, this challenge that you have identified? Uh, the first thing that we've put aside was to firstly to acknowledge the fact that uh, we, we have limited numbers within our, our, our disposal. So we really have to build down on the capacity building. Now, under the technical, the three priority legs will be the referee, the table officials, as well as the stacks that we're going to focus on coming 2021 onwards. So the recruitment of the referees as well as the the table officials 
that will be the priority for us, especially when it comes to, to juniors. And then when we start focusing on the seniors that will be from under 16 upward, we can start introducing the students. Uh, we already have dates lined up uh, as of Feb early next year, whereby we will be doing capacity building. So all we will have to work on now is to make sure that all the clubs within CTPA are perimeters comply and be sent in. really interested in becoming Official. I think one of the challenge uh, Jason, is when the call is made, people are just sending for compliance purposes. And then that mind shift from our constituencies will have to change. Whereby we, we really need people that are passionate about officiating. We play a major role in, in the development of basketball. So capacity building will be number one. And then uh, the second thing that we're going to start focusing on is to make sure that we, we run a, a cost-effective program when it comes to the clinical officials. I mean, knowing the history of CTPA, that way bulk of the, the money, the resources go into, but we'll have to, to come up with a framework that is a, a win, win situation so that we can motivate more people to, to be involved in officiating as well as to try and build relationship with this. Because that's one of, of the reasons why we decide to leave officiating because of maybe some will say it's an upgrade from the cookies. Uh, some may say people can't stand it. But we need to be able to build a relationship between the cookies as well as the technical officials so that we can synergy between the two. So, so those are the, are the critical things that come 2021 will try and focus on when it comes to the side of it. Thank, thank you, Masi. Um, there, there seems to be a little bit of uh, technical challenges uh, sound-wise. Your, your sound uh, tends to, to fluctuate a little. I'm going to direct one or two questions to Kirk, and I'm going to ask our guys working behind the scenes to assist you to deal with that. So um, if you don't mind just engaging with, with, with Rafik, who's, who's working behind the scenes. Kirk, welcome to our discussion. Um, and as indicated, you are a valuable member of the Competitions Commission. Um, so the, the, the first question I want to ask you is, given, given the, the fact that 2020 was basically a, a no year in terms of basketball yeah. and, and sport in general, um, how do you plan to, to, to get things going in, in 2021? How do, we, how do we start? Where do you start as a Competitions Commission to, 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 to get people back onto the courts? You should not come out swinging with the, the hard questions. Because, <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, it's, really, it's, really, it's really a tough situation to, to answer. Because, I mean, because we, we're in unprecedented times. We, we've never been in a situation before. And we're really trying to just figure it out as we go. And <clears throat> the, best, the best approach at this very point in time is to take a, just to take a wait and see approach and to see how things are going to unfold. Um, we're, heading, we're heading into a period where people are very pessimistic about the outcome going through December and going through the festive season. So we, we don't know how we're gonna come out on the other side, but we can, what all we can be is optimistic and put things in place to plan and be ready for when, 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 it's, time to, when it's time to kick on. Um, but that being said, we need to be responsible. We need to just be cautious and 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 have our our members' safety at the forefront of all the decisions we make. So um, moving forward, um, just taking into consideration the the, the standards of um, temperature checks, sanitizers, uh, masks, social distancing, and having all of those things implemented at venues, um, just just from a, a precautionary standpoint. Um, that, that's just the beginning of, of looking at how we're going to approach this um, because the bulk of our venues are, <clears throat> are educational institutions. Um, so they come with their own, their own um, challenges and protocols that we need to adhere to. So that's going to be a challenge. Um, but I think the best way forward would probably be to just start with with mini tournaments, have them run, get them over a weekend, just so that we can start looking at logistically how we can implement 
um, having officials monitoring um, monitoring um, members coming in, into the the venue to ensure that we we um, are being cautious and, and and we are taking those protocols into consideration. Um, that, like I say, venues is possibly our, our biggest challenge. Um, what we what we're going to look like after December? That's going to be a wait and see and see how how that happens. And also, it's it's tough because we can't take our directive from from BSA or even from WCBA because what works for Pretoria or for any region in the KZN where they could possibly have COVID under control, um, that might not apply to the Cape Metropole if in actual fact it does turn out to be a hotspot. Or maybe it's not and we can and we can proceed, but we don't know. And so taking directive from BSA is going to be challenging because they will look at it as holistic and not as pinpointed to a to um, the Cape Metropole in in particular. So yeah, yeah, we we, we 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 are we are in a very challenging road ahead of us, but I think we we will we'll get through it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the the, the COVID reality is going to be the uh, w the extent of it next year. We we will obviously, as you say, it's a it's a wait and see situation. We are, however, not stalling our plans. We're putting things in place to make sure Correct. that people can get back onto the courts um, come February, March next year. Um, which remains our focus, and and I agree with you. You know the 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 adoption of a one size fits all approach in this environment just simply it simply it won't work. It won't yeah. work. So uh, you know compliance and and safety precautions I think is going to be a standard thing for us going forward. People will have to get used to sanitizers. People will have to get used to you know playing your game and getting into your car and going oh, um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, um, it's not what we want. But um, that's that's what. Um, yeah. the, the reality is at the moment. Um, Kirk, having having listened to to that, um, you know, COVID aside, um, the CTBA has has drafted a strategic framework and 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 what we want to achieve in the next three years. One of it is expanding the footprint of basketball in in the metropole. As a competitions commission, how yeah. do you guys intend to contribute to that? So basically, to grow where basketball is being played. What what are your intentions? Yes, so we've we've looked at a number of of options. Um, what we want to focus on is mini mini basketball, which is something that has been lacking over the last year or two. Um, previously, there was a there was a decent focus on on under under eight and under ten basketball. Um, we need to we need to readdress that. Potentially work closely with schools um, and see. Where we can, where we can get some, find some synergies on um, developing that aspect of of the game in the Western Cape. Um, the, the other thing that we looked at was implementing a under twenty two age group. Um, this has been an issue for a very, very long time. We've we've toiled over this um for a number of 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 years and we've looked at it and we've looked at it from a number of different angles at one stage we looked at um implementing a a high performance training camp for um for your uh high performance under 18s um because of that big divide we find that moving from from junior to senior um there's a lot of fall off and kids struggle to make that adjustment from from junior to senior um, so implementing the under 22 age group, that's a big step because it will create a space for, for them for further growth. Um, so yeah, so that is one of the, 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 um, additional ways we were looking at expanding. Then also focusing on females, um, there's been a lot of hype and discussion around focusing on developing the female game and, and expanding on that. and. I know being involved in Comco last year, we did struggle with accommodating or, or just making that work. It was a it was a real challenge making that work. And we, we really need to focus on that and pour a lot of energy into that. Um, that being said, currently on Comco, I'm gonna be a bit controversial here, but this is how we progress. Um, currently on, on Comco, we've got 
six members, um, one of them being a female. Um, so we do need to expand those numbers to improve um, female basketball. I would really like to see one or two of our more experienced um, players that have gone through the ranks, that have gone through juniors, that have gone through seniors, that have experienced the, the challenges so we can get feedback from somebody like that that can that can give invaluable input into ways of improving the female game. Um, mm. So what better way to do it than to get information from somebody that has gone through it. Um, sure. and that's, not, that's not saying that the current female within Comco won't add value because she's phenomenal. I know she's worked in a number of sports codes. She's got experience from different sports codes, but she's, she's quite junior focused. So that will help us growing the female basketball within juniors. We'd like to expand yeah. that to growing the female basketball in seniors as well. Yeah. Sure. No, thanks for that. And being controversial is only a bad thing if you don't take us forward. So if there's no progress, <laughs> then, then then you should rather not go there. But but I think it's not this. That's it's not that's not that in this instance. Um, we are also joined now by Anthony Jackson. Um, he he joined us late, but he is here, and we we thank him for that. He represents the Coaching and Development Commission. Mr. Jackson, are you welcome? And and thank you for 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 taking the time to be with us. So I'm I'm gonna uh, um, start swinging at you as well, as Kirk put it. Um, you know, our our region has a very proud history of of developing young players, of developing coaches and when i say top coaches i mean national coaches um that that basically set the standard for others to follow in the country um as a coaching and development commission um what are your plans to to ensure that this stays the case and and to actually build on it um how do you intend doing that mr jackson can you hear us Looks like he's frozen. Mm. Oh, there we go. He's... No, there we go. Mr. Jackson, you're on mute, sir. There we go. Hi. Hi. Um, evening. Sorry, I'm late. sorry, I'm late. Um, got technical difficulties on my side. Okay. No um, your question on 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 development. Um, coaching development, um, what we will try to do this year is um, start start developing from junior level all the way up to the elite level, which is senior level. Because um, during the course of, of our basketball career, most of our most of our players they decide to drift away from the game because there's no further competition and there's no further development. And then um, we. We we will we will have to we have to it's either we 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 will be how can I say this now develop them further as players but where do we go beyond um playing under eighteen then from under eighteen the guys have to jump to senior level and there's no in between so automatically there's no growth for them to 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 play further so what we're gonna try as Kirk said earlier on about under twenty two um we're gonna try and um not try we will develop or user development from from juniors all the way up to our levels so that there's no break in between from 18 to senior level uh where you can actually compete against your own age for quite a bit some time also um when it comes to females because females is um now they they intend to, to stay away from the game longer the reason being for that was most of most of our clubs that we doesn't we, we don't for um, players or basketball teams, there's not a lot of that. Um, and then um, they also intend to stay away because of the the one 16 under 18, and then we find out that they, 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 the teams doesn't have under 18 or uh, senior ladies, and then that also just goes away. Um, also, yeah, sorry, man. Um, I think not that I have. Number okay. one topic. Maybe no, that's on that's yeah, that's guys. that's that's fine. That's fine, AJ. Um, I think you've you've created the picture. I'm 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 just also picking up. We we have a bit of of technical issues with the sound and the picture on your side. So I'm going to allow the guys behind the scenes to try and deal with it. Um, 
Massey, if you don't mind, I want to I want to put you on the spot with this one um, because um, I know in your professional environment you deal with this type of question very often. Um, so the the concept development in sport is generally associated with junior players. It's generally associated with youngsters, you know, developing them, getting them into the game, and and this this isn't in my view this isn't the, the correct interpretation of what development should be what what is your understanding of of that concept and and how should it be applied in a basketball context uh it, that's that's a tough one jason <laughs> as you as as you as you mentioned that you know development development is broad that's number one uh, there are three pillars that I personally believe on. When it comes to, to the word, I break it down to, to three pillars that will be to introduce, to refine, as well as to master. So, so irrespectively which level you work on, uh, an athlete needs to be introduced to a particular skill. Now, in terms of the basketball context, Juniors, if we talk of development within our space, it normally falls under the the school's basketball because that is where the, the grassroots level starts. And then when those kids move from school, on an after school, they will move to the club because the schools need to be fed us to the clubs. So, so there, when it comes to, to mass participation, we'll be talking about that development. And then what the clubs, are entrusted with is to make sure that they introduce the the athletes to different stages of development because the the clubs we we work in a in a in an environment where clubs are supposed to be the experts over the schools and then yeah. at the middle age we we're supposed to be refining those skills it also falls within the club system and then again, it, it respectively whether you are talking of the under eight or you're talking of under 18 or you're talking of seniors, they, they're supposed to be a process where we, we focus on refining the skills or nurturing the skills. And then at a certain level of your program, they're supposed, they're supposed to master. So, so again, I, I'm not talking of any particular age group. But to me, those are the three pillars that in any program we're supposed to be able to focus on. Now, as the, as the district federation, it should be our responsibility to cater for grassroots in terms of development, as well as to cater for the elite athletes. I think Keck mentioned in terms of the, the competition, competition around the, the camps that needs to, to be put in place so that we can be able to refine as well as to master certain skills for, for our athletes to be able to, to progress and compete at the national and possibly international stages. Now, we, we shouldn't be in a situation where there is a mismatch. The athletes are growing, but the coaches are already reaching their ceiling. So again, if we talk of the development, it should be a, a, a concept of an athlete-centered but coach-driven. So by that, I mean everything that we drive should be centered around the athletes, but it needs to be driven by the coach. So the coach needs to be also developed in such a way that you always stay two steps, three steps ahead of your athletes. The, the day a coach is, is a step or two below the athlete, then, then it's a problem because yeah. you, you, you won't have the, the capacity to push that athletes further. So, so yeah. development is broad. It, it, it's up to us to be able to zoom into a specific, but I always believe in our context as the Federation, we must be able to cater for the mass participation as well as we must be able to cater for those that shows progress in terms of the, the elite athletes within our space. Same with the coaching. There are coaches that will be coming uh, fresh in the system we must be able to develop those coaches as well as there are coaches that have been in the system for some time. That also needs that little bit of a push. Technical, it's the same thing. So we have, we're sitting with a group of officials that are on a different levels. Also, if we talk of the development, we must be able to cater for those different stages of the technical uh, officials. Yeah. 
So it's it's broad, but I think we just need to be able to zoom and focus on a particular program that we know it will be able to make to have an impact in our yep. stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Masya. I think that's extremely valuable so that the the concept and the notion of development cannot only be associated with our players, but must also be linked to our coaches in order to facilitate the development of players. And and I want to add a third tier to that, that our administrators, the guys sitting there making decisions, also needs to have this understanding um, so that our decisions are not influenced by what we write in you know documents only, but yeah. we, it's what we want to deliver out on the courts um, in our in our instance. So, so Masi, back to the technical component, if you don't mind. So you've earlier indicated and you've referred to this concept of our success in the development of officials will lie in the role and the support played by clubs. So how, how what ideal role should clubs play? How should they embrace this, this concept? What are the things that they can do as members of the CTBA to contribute to the capacity development within the technical space? Okay. They are in, in the current situation. So all our technical officials are club members. Hmm. So we, it's only few that are independent, if I can use that word. So by virtue of technical officials being club members, it, it, it means people need to be supported in terms of the resources wise, because it, it's one of the major thing. Our, our league, we use different venues. So from point A to point B, uh, what we normally do, we'll just say, Mr. X, you officiating at X venue. How the person is going to get there, it, it becomes the club responsibility. So, so that is the first thing that in terms of the, the support from the clubs. The second one is to, to have a human factor, to understand that before the person becomes an official, that person is a human being. So the, the ill treatment of officials during their, while they're doing their duties, it, it needs to come to a stop. So if, if the clubs can have that understanding of we, we're respecting an official as a human being, we're respecting an official because everyone will make errors. Some errors might cost you a position or some errors might cost you a game, but it, it cannot be the end of the world. It doesn't qualify a person to be sort of ill-treated because of that particular error. So, so that, is, that is the second thing that I think we will need from, from the clubs for people to understand that we are all in this thing for the greater of basketball. We are all in this sport to try and make our impact and to add value in the development of the code. So, so if people can be respected, if people can be assisted in terms of the resources by the clubs. The third one, the clubs must be able to hold us accountable as the technical commission. So we shouldn't be in a situation where Officials are supposed to be in the game and then games get forfeited because it's only one official and there, there, is, there is no follow-up of that. So I think the clubs, the communication between us and the clubs, it must be a two-way as well as the, the respect between us and clubs, it must be a two-way. I always say to, 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 to my fellow colleagues, you know, technical officials are the only service providers in our league with, with all due respect. When, when we put a whistle or when we take a pen and start writing on the score sheet, uh, at the end of the month, there will be an incentive for what we contribute. We're the only people that get that incentive. So by virtue of us getting such incentive, we're supposed to act as professionals. So everything that we will be doing, it needs to be on a professional manner because we, we, we are getting remuneration for it. So, so, so once we have that understanding between the clubs as well as the technical officials, the, the respect, acknowledging each individual's contribution within basketball in Cape Town, and then it will make our, our job easier. But the, above all, every single person will need to be accountable for what we do. So I think the, the, those, those, those couple of things are, are, are what will make 2021 and forward uh, season a successful one. Yeah. 
Th thanks, Basi. And, and I think I want to at this point say to everyone on the panel and those tuned in that these these engagements, I've said it before, are not only you know uh, making up time. It's it's not like we have we have nothing else to do. This this is part of our fact finding engagement. It's part of our engagement to say how do we improve um, our business of, of basketball and, and I think there is a lot of value in what you've in what you've said. Kirk, I'm gonna direct a similar question to you. Um, in, in terms of the relationship and the role of club members and other stakeholders. And I, I want you to also include that, you know, we have club members that we cater competition for, but there's also other entities. There's private companies, there's NGOs, who wants to have events, who wants to have tournaments. How, how should this um, relationship be cemented in order to to gain mutual benefit you know for the basketball community and and for those wanting to contribute and invest into our sport yeah so um we can learn a lot from the events of 2019 um when uh, what is it when when cape classic was formed um, that was a very successful um, implementation of a a league that ran in synergy with with um, the CD Bay League um, with the the CTBL. Um, and we do encourage that that sort of thing, and we do look forward to more people with initiatives coming forward and trying to um, and trying to grow the sport of basketball through these initiatives as long as there's discussion and there's alignment so that we don't create crashes when people want to uh, want to host events um we we did have a very open doors policy last year and there were a number of clubs and organizations that came to the ctba with um requests of hosting events and we were able to accommodate them and it, it ran it, it was quite a successful um, implementation of incorporating um, call them third party um, service providers wanting to to provide basketball to the basketball community and I look forward to continuing that going forward um, just by communicating and being open and engaging in, in discussions on how we can make make them work and we generally try to accommodate um, these the, these initiatives as much as possible because the more basketball our community plays the better and the, and and the, the 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 more growth we'll have so so yeah, yeah. so it's just by 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 aligning these, these these events and not having crashes um then we can we, we we can all benefit from it yeah sure and i think to to just underline that our business if if we were a company or um, our business is is the product we deliver is is basketball that's that's what we want to encourage so you know we encourage anyone who wants to contribute and be part of it but i think the key lies in what you said there needs to be alignment and and that, yeah. that shouldn't be standalone stuff and you know breakaway uh, type of environments being created so that's that's essentially what we want to achieve now anthony i see you back and and um you, you seem to have found a, a sweeter spot in terms of connection there so that's great i want to direct a, a final question bef uh, before we, we we wrap up to you so so you know, we we are in the business of building society. We're in the business of creating positive alternatives to social ills. Um, but very often we don't make a conscious effort to deliver that angle of the sport to our game. You know, we just take our kids off the street, we train them a little, we go play and then they go home. But are there more um, intentional things that we can do as a CTBA to promote social development, to instill principles and values um, in our youngsters um, when we have them either at training or for league matches? Are there things that the Coaching and Development Commission will look at to, to do those types of things? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, yes, we do. Uh, but firstly, to, to all clubs, um, we have to we have to install um, like half an hour or hour with life skills because most of our players from junior level all the way to senior level, uh, most of us we don't have discipline. Because as soon as we get to a place and we sorry what the word, but then we go boss. 
uh, it is no one um there shouldn't be people telling you what to do you should know what to do once you get um at a venue so we as um the development and coaching we we would like to ask um clubs um coaches players to to life skills with your players with your juniors under 18 all the way to seniors um because players will grow more the one uh, they will also have respect to to the venue and to the game because i mean basketball it's, it's a global sport and everybody looks at you and they will see if you have discipline or not just by your actions so um also um we, we we would also like to to uh, have coaching clinics uh, not just for players but for coaches also um i mean there's a lot of potential out there um i saw last year that the um, good coaches coming up i myself I also try to, to coach but um we still need guidance and with those uh, development and coaching that is what that is what we, we we're trying to do um we will also um so the, the super league teams to conduct coaching clinics to to the newly developed teams to your junior teams um not just for the clubs but for for the entire um ctbi western cape and then take it from there and then obviously yes we will get up and then um we will we will ctbi will be back on top again from the bsa said discipline more good okay great Th thanks thanks anthony and um I, I i i there's a lot of other districts um you know restructuring having new leaderships and um there's nothing wrong with some good positive competition so i like the 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 challenge that you put out there that we will be on top um we'll have to we'll have to make sure that we deliver on that guys before we end off um i i think we've had a nice uh, uh, uh uh, discussion in my view we've really just scratched the surface we weren't able to get into the nuts and bolts of it but but perhaps some closing thoughts i'm going to give each of you a minute or so just to to wrap up and if there's anything else that you want to contribute that wasn't asked that you want to to highlight to us so um and and, and try to stick to the minute as as far as you can so so Masi, we start with you and then kirk and then we finish off with aja and then then i'll just wrap up the session um after this round Masi. Uh, I think the the success of CTPA programs will depend on the synergy between our commissions. So for us, it's technical to, to be able to perform our duties. We need athletes to run the floor. The athletes need coaches to stand on the sideline. So if there is no synergy between the the three or the four competitions, then then Unfortunately, as technical officials, there is nothing else that we'll be able to do. So, so the the synergy, the respect, uh, it it weighs a, a a lot of weight from our side. And just for us to understand that one way or another, we are contributing to the greater cause of basketball within CTPA boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Masi. Uh, Kirk. Yes. Yeah, so. I do believe that the last question that you put to the to the panel um, regarding social ills and how we how we can um, fix that is a big uh, is a big chunk of how we can progress the sport um, because life skills is a very it's a pivotal thing in it should be incorporated in everything we do from junior through to senior level. Um, and we there needs to be a bigger focus on this. And I think if we focus on that, we will be able to grow this, the, not only the sport, but the human beings that play the sport as well. Um, and I, I, I firmly believe that. Um, and another thing is we must remember that we play the sport for fun. And um, like Masi said about the, the relationship between technical officials and and players, it's we we here to have a, we here to enjoy the sport and to push ourselves and 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 to to challenge ourselves. It's it's, it's not about 
the competition is about the enjoyment of the competition. So those two things will go, will, will stand us in good stead in how we progress the sport. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Kirk. Um, is Anthony still with us? Um, I know we've had some technical issues there. Doesn't seem like it. No, gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your time and, and for your contributions. And as I said in the beginning, for the work you have done in basketball over the last, it's going to sound very, very bad, but 20 years probably in, in all of our cases, if I think about it. Um, and and uh, we look forward to another 20 to come in, in one way or the other. Um, so when Masi retires from coaching, then he can take a whistle and run up and down the sideline and, and play that role going forward. But but we look forward to, and I, I think that's a key thing in in, in, in getting and, and people staying involved in the game. You know, sometimes people reach that ceiling that ah, I'm not going to play anymore. But there's always something that you can do. There's always a contribution that you can make. And I think we, we must do a lot more to keep our people in the system and not just to, to give them a bouquet of flowers and say thank you very much. Um, let's let's move on and find the next one. Um, that's not going to be the, this uh, or, or the case this this time around. So um, thank you and thank you for everyone who tuned in. Just a heads up: next week we are talking financial management and governance in our game. Um, we it, it is a it is a big issue, and it brings our organisations into question very often. And we've decided to dedicate a session to that only. So next week, we will have a few of our colleagues from the Finance Audit and Risk Commission that will join us. And we will talk about how we need to maintain compliance, how we need to um, get systems in our structures to ensure that we can attract investment, but that we can generally just provide account, accounting and, and leadership. Uh, accountability and leadership to, to, to our members. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. And to everyone that tuned in, we look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday at 7 o'clock for another session of Let's Talk Cape Town Basketball. Cheers for tonight. We'll see each other next week.